Hi, welcome to this introduction on Yang Shen. My name is Jane. I'm a naturopathic nutritionist and TCM practitioner with an interest in longevity and the promotion of natural health. I believe that it is important to keep our bodies in a healthy condition in order to prevent disease, both chronic and acute, from occurring. This is an introduction to a set of six lectures on the nourishment of life, or Yang Shen, with a seventh lecture which will be based upon questions and answers. Firstly, let's get the disclaimer out of the way. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Based upon my experience as a nutritional therapist and Chinese medicine practitioner, the information is based mainly upon Chinese medicine and Taoist practices for health and longevity. The information herewith is not meant to take the place of the advice of a doctor. If you feel that you are suffering from any illness, whether that be chronic or acute, then please contact your GP or medical professional. Do not start any new nutritional or health protocols by yourself. It's always best to work with a professional nutritionist or practitioner of your choice and inform your GP of your new intentions. What is Yang Sheng? Sun Tzu Miao in the 7th century BC summarized it perfectly when he said, do not take good health for granted, just as one should not forget danger in times of peace. Try to prevent the coming of disease beforehand. So therefore, Yang Sheng can be called the nourishment of life. The word is made up of two Chinese characters, Yang meaning to nurture or nourish and Sheng meaning life or vitality. Therefore, the aim of Yang Sheng is harmony. It is not just an aim for physical health, but aim for harmony within the body of physical, mental and emotional well-being. If this practice is started young enough, we can be seen to see good health and fitness well into our old age. So how do we do this? Well, there are three rules to the cultivation of health and longevity, and these rules will all be covered in a series of lectures. The first rule will be covered in the first lecture. The first rule being to avoid any behaviour that causes harm. This can be drinking to excess, smoking cigarettes, eating poor quality food or at the wrong times, eating too much or too little. We will look at other addictive behaviours that cause harm, such as recreational drugs or addictions to sugars and sweets. We'll take a look at how physical inactivity can be damaging to health and well-being. Physical inactivity does have its place when we are sick. It is not natural for man. We are designed to be active beings. We'll take a look at how allowing damaging emotions such as anger, hate or jealousy can wreak havoc on our lives, our physical and mental health and well-being. The second rule on actively promoting health and well-being will be covered over two lectures. We'll take a look at taming our harmful emotions such as anger, hatred and jealousy. We'll take a look at how we can cultivate positive emotional responses to things that may be happening within our lives that we have no control over. We'll take a look at eating well and exercising on how getting sufficient sleep is beneficial to our health and emotional well-being. We'll look at the best hours to sleep and on ways we can attain a on a regular basis quality sleep. We'll have a look at how spending some time in nature each week is beneficial to health and well-being as is the cultivation of good relationships with family or friends. The third rule will be covered over two lectures, lectures four and five where we will take a look at how within the Asian traditions there are steps that go far beyond diet and exercise for health and well-being. Activities such as meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong and yoga which are thought of to deeply nourish life. We will also take a look at caloric restriction otherwise known as intermittent fasting and its benefits on health and well-being. 
So let's have a quick recap on what we've covered so far on the nourishment of life practices and what we will be learning in this six lesson presentation. We're going to look at the cultivation of the mind and emotions and how emotions can play havoc with our health and well-being. We're going to take a look at regulating our diet. So we'll look at what to eat, what times to eat, how to eat and how where and how we eat has an impact upon our health. We're going to look at cultivating the body and look at things such as Tai Chi and Qigong and meditation and their effects on our health and well-being. We're going to be taking a look at sleep and the effects of sleep upon health. We're going to take a look at the Taoist viewpoint on having a healthy and rewarding sex life and how that can affect longevity. We'll take a look on the enjoyment of nature, music, dance and art and how that affects our life and health. We'll be paying special attention to lifestyle during pregnancy and after childbirth and caring for those children wisely throughout their informative years. We'll also take a look at managing the ageing process well. After all, old age is a pleasure denied to many and granted to few. Where does Yang Sheng originate from? The art of the nourishment of life has been practiced in China for at least two and a half thousand years. It draws from a wide range of traditions, including spiritual, cultural, medical traditions, which include shamanism. There are traditions from Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism, classical medicine, martial arts and folk knowledge. Scrolls were found from the second century in a sealed tomb gave advice on health and well-being. It offered instructions on how to adapt to climatic changes through the four seasons of the year, how to practice over a hundred different health and well-being exercises, and how to eat well and how to conduct a healthy sex life. Now, it does seem like an overwhelming and daunting prospect, especially in the times we are currently in. So this series of six talks will offer information on the importance of remaining healthy. There will be a support network over Facebook and Instagram via the Dow to Health pages. There you'll find a safe space for support to ask questions, have discussion and get feedback on matters pertaining to Yang Sheng or the nurturing of life and health. This is an additional page containing information for reading at home. There are three books here that I believe are some of the best books to help you understand Chinese medicine and longevity practices. There is Live Well, Live Long by Peter Dedman, which I will be quoting from excessively during these talks. It is a great reference book on the nourishment of life, which I cannot recommend highly enough. There is also for an understanding of Chinese medicine, The Web That Has No Weaver by Ted Kapchuk. A third book that I have down here is called Guarding the Three Treasures, which is another amazing book on understanding Chinese health practices. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I hope that you will join me for the first of the six lectures next week. Bye.